Hello, MCU fans. With Secret Invasion coming right around the corner, less than two weeks away, I was asked if I would refresh a video that I did nine months ago. I still can't believe nine months ago. That's crazy. But on who might be a scroll. So I've added a list of brand new suspects, as well as some of the ones we talked about before, as well as new facts that we've learned from the trailers. And I think this will be a lot of fun. So let's dive right in and see who might be a scroll in Secret Invasion. Okay, so one of the things we need to do is review the things we learned from the Captain Marvel movie, because we learned a lot about how scrolls operate and what they can and cannot do. Okay, so we learned that they can sim or simulate someone down to that individual's DNA. So literally their fingerprints, I mean their actual DNA, uh, would be completely replicated and impossible to figure out if they were or were not the real person or if they were a scroll. So that's important to keep in mind. Also, they can sim organic or inorganic matter. There was a joke in the movie about uh, simulating a, a file cabinet. And they were. Uh, we also learned that they can sim things that are bigger or smaller than their own size. There was a joke about them turning into a cat. Um, we learned that they can only sim someone's recent memories. So when they take you over, they do get the very recent memories that you have, but not your long-term memories. However, I want to throw something out that we learned in the trailers. So we see a couple scenes from the trailers where it appears like this might be the bodies of the people who have been replaced. So they didn't kill them. They just captured them and put them in these strange looking devices. Because notice, as they're laying down on those tables, like uh, this person's head is on something, like maybe getting information from them. What, what if they're literally able to tap into their long-term memories so that now if they get asked a question about something you know, from a year ago or two years ago, they're able to figure out what that is. So in other words, Captain Marvel was still right. Inherently, they only get your short-term memories, but maybe they found a way to tap into long-term memories. I don't know, but that would be really interesting and would actually make them way more effective in replacing people. Okay, so what else do we learn? We learned that they can sim someone's appearance, but not their powers. Because Captain Marvel says, hey, here's something they can't do, and fires a blast and destroys stuff there in the bar. However, we have learned in the trailers that they seem to have access to some damage control specimens, and one of them sure looks like coal, which might very well be coal obsidian, and I'm guessing that maybe damage control collected... <laughs> my man's arm, uh, when it got uh, chopped off in Infinity War. And maybe they're using this DNA to splice uh, and create super scrolls. I mean, I don't know how else to explain what Gravik's doing here, because that sure looks like a superpower. So again, it's not that Captain Marvel was wrong. In 1995, they had not figured out how to do this. But it looks like they've been improving themselves. Now, do I still think they're going to be uh, simming superheroes? I don't think so. I think Secret Invasion is going to be more low-key, more espionage, more mystery, and having a bunch of superheroes, even though they were great in the comics, the Secret Invasion comic was fantastic with superheroes. I just don't think that's where they're going here. But the door's been opened, certainly, that that could be the case. I mean, clearly, Gravik is wreaking some havoc, because that dude on the right, he don't make it out of this scene. <laughs> I guarantee he's, he's done for. So, very interesting. And what I think is wild, too, is that means Fury's probably unaware that Gravik and maybe others have superpowers because they didn't used to. And is may maybe, maybe, is that what this machine they're building is helping them do? Maybe Because we don't know what on earth this machine is, and we see it uh, several times in the trailers. But maybe they're using that to combine their DNA somehow. Who knows? But definitely, definitely they are able to have some form of superpowers uh, in the series. Okay, so what else do we learn? Well, they revert to their true form upon serious injury or death, uh, like the scroll there being autopsy did. So that would definitely mean anyone who you know was very badly injured, say uh, Nick Fury in The Winter Soldier or Rhodey in Civil War, they certainly could not have been scrolls at that point. Doesn't mean they could have been scrolls after that point, but we know that anybody that was seriously injured uh, would, would revert back to their original form. Obviously, if they died, they would revert back. But we saw in the Captain Marvel um, movie, there were times where people were just injured and returned back to their original form before they died. Okay, 
So what strategies might the scrolls employ? Well, there are a lot of very important organizations that they might want to get involved in and, and, and kind of rise to the ranks in. I mean, you got New As Asgard, you got Stark Industries, PimTech, uh, Damage Control, uh, the FBI, the NSA, Hydra, if they're still around, they might be, Wakanda, S.W.O.R.D. I mean, there are so many important organizations in the MCU. So keep in mind, these are things that they would want to gain access to because that would make them all the more powerful to have that information and the tech, etc. But it's also important to realize they don't need to be the head of the organization. They just need to be someone with access to the information. So it doesn't mean the head of these organizations have to be a scroll, but just someone that can get access to the tech uh, and other things. And they also don't have to have always been simming someone, but may have done it more recently. That's what makes this so interesting, because it's not a question of have they always been a scroll. They could have done it in the last couple years, for example, or five years ago, etc. So very interesting. Um, and keep in mind, the person they're simming isn't necessarily dead. There might be some reveals where someone turns out to be a scroll where we're like, oh my gosh, does that mean, you know, the, the, let's say it's Rhodey. The real Rhodey is dead? No. We saw from those trailers, and I, I showed earlier, a lot of bodies being kept in stasis. So I'm pretty sure they didn't kill anybody. They have kept them around and may well again be using their memories. Um, also, uh, we, we learned that someone can't have been seriously injured uh, while simming someone. So keep that in mind. And I think the blip may have allowed them to use the chaos to their advantage. Uh, if you think about how you know insane it would have been during those five years, half of the world just vanished. That's a great time for the scrolls to come in and try to rise to the ranks in some of these organizations. And theoretically, we may be even seeing some flashbacks. Uh, Kevin Feige alluded to that, that some of at least Secret Invasion may touch on the, the five-year blip period. So very cool. All right. So with all these things in mind, who might be a scroll? Well, I think an obvious one is Nick Fury and Maria Hill, because we know that Talos and his wife Soren have impersonated them at times. Obviously, during Far From Home, that was not the real Nick Fury, nor it was the real Maria Hill. So the question is, like, let's take Fury. When did Talos start impersonating him? Well, I'm pretty sure it was the real Nick Fury up until at least the Winter Soldier, because obviously he was very badly injured, so he would have reverted back to scroll form. But I could imagine after Winter Soldier that he said, basically, I'm a head out of here, and went and helped build and run the Sabre space station uh, in space. So was it Fury in Age of Ultron? You know, it's been weird. They kind of gave us this hint of, of cutting stuff diagonally, but then again, was it bread or was it toast? There's been all kinds of debates on whether the Easter egg in uh, Captain Marvel was indicating that this was or was not the real Nick Fury. I don't know. I think it'd be kind of funny if it wasn't him and it was actually Talos, but who knows, right? Uh, then there's a the question of, was Nick Fury blipped? Or was that Talos? Now, you could argue, well, it couldn't have been Talos because he would have reverted back to scroll form. But I don't know. The blip didn't really hurt, it didn't seem. No, no one screamed out in pain. They just vanished. So it very well could have been Talos impersonating Fury. And he was gone. So then the question is, that is Fury around during the five-year blip then, if that was Talos? Or for that matter, was it a third scroll, uh, another scroll impersonating Fury? Maybe he had multiple people impersonating him. But I guess we're really going to find out during Secret Invasion, was Fury around during the blip? Because if he was, then that was probably Talos. So that's an interesting question. One thing we did learn, though, there was a recent article that told us for certain it's the real Nick Fury at Tony's funeral. That's been something I've wondered for a while, and I'm kind of glad they came out and said that, because it just would have been weird if that was Talos. I mean, that needed to be Nick Fury there. Uh, you know, assuming he was in Sabre in space, you gotta leave the space station to come and be at that funeral. So we know that much at least. But after that, he took off. He was in space. So, so we know for certain that was him in Endgame and not him uh, ever since. All right, uh, what else do we learn? Well, they confirm in, uh, uh, they actually released, Marvel released the first several minutes of the first episode online, and they confirm, yes, Fury is on Saber. And, uh, of course, in the Marvel's trailer, we learned what Saber is. That is the name of the space station. So that's kind of cool. They've synced this up really well. I guess I thought it was S.W.O.R.D., but it's a different organization, or it's the 
still soared as an organization, and they just named the space station Saber. So we'll find out. But bottom line, we know that Fury is is up on Saber. Okay, and then you might say, hey, how did you get access to the first several minutes of episode one? Well, I suspect most people know this by now, but on the off chance that you don't, there is a website, uh, theinvasionhasbegun.com, but it requires a password. And this is the password if you don't already know it. Um, So uh, mark that down and go to this website and you can check out the first several minutes. Because Marvel did this really cool viral campaign where they tweeted out pieces of this image one at a time, and then deleted it. So you didn't, if you weren't, you know, catching it when it came out, it was gone. But if you put them all together, these reveal the password. You can see like the D3 there near the upper left, and RS is highlighted. I mean, it's not rocket science. They wanted you to figure it out because they want you to watch this, but it's really cool. I've never seen a marketing campaign like this by Marvel. This is really, really cool. Makes me excited that the series is going to be Uh, just amazing from start to finish. So can't wait. Um, Anyway, another interesting thing is that we see in the trailers that Rhodey warns Fury he's in danger. You're the most wanted man on the planet. Well, that's interesting since he's up in Saber. What's going on? Did did Talos mess up somehow (laughs) as Fury? Or did someone frame Fury, one of the scrolls, frame him? Um, I've kind of got a suspicion they're going to frame him for killing the president. We're going to talk more about Ritson and, and his fate in a minute. But clearly, something, they allude, if you watch the, that first several minutes of episode one, they allude to a really, really massive uh, event that the scrolls are going to pull off. So I'm wondering if it's killing the president and if they make it look like Fury did it. Who knows? We'll see. Uh, so anyway, back to Nick Fury and Maria Hill. When... Was he Fury and when was he not? Uh, well, uh, again, I'm just going to go on the record and say I think he was not Fury after the Winter Soldier and that that's Talos there in Age of Ultron and um, Infinity War. I think he came back, obviously, for Endgame and then he's been in space. That's my opinion. But what about Maria Hill? You know, it's interesting. Maria Hill did not appear in Captain Marvel. You know, Coulson did, Fury did, but they didn't have Hill now, either they just didn't want to de-age her, or she wasn't part of the organization yet. I don't know. She's probably not old enough. She was even old enough to be part of S.H.I.E.L.D. in 1995. So there may be a reason she wasn't there. But there are at least theories that what if there never was a real Maria Hill? What if her character in the MCU has always been Soren in disguise? I'd be kind of bummed because I love Maria Hill. Great character. But what a reveal that would be. Now, obviously, you have to have someone to sim. So there has to be somewhere a real Maria Hill, but it could be, you know, her in Topeka, Kansas, that they just picked an image. And then anybody that sees, you know, Maria Hill from S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, but is friends with the person they simmed, right, is like, boy, she looks a lot like you. (laughs) That's just wild, isn't it? But yeah, who knows? Who knows? Tell me your theory. Do you think there is a Maria Hill or not? Um, Again, I kind of hope there is, but it'd be quite a wild reveal if there wasn't. Okay, so how about others? Well, clearly, uh, infiltrating sword and damage control would be something the scrolls would want to do. But we also know there's good scrolls in some of these organizations, because at the end of WandaVision, that was clearly a good scroll telling Maria Rambo, hey, Fury wants you uh, up in space, obviously, at Saber. On the other hand, though, I have to wonder if Haywood might have been a scroll because boy was he like over the top vicious in it in the end of wandavision trying to kill the kids for crying out loud that seems like maybe a scroll who was you know couldn't believe how fortunate they were to now be the head of sword and would wanted to do anything they could to keep that position of power so i could totally see haywood being a scroll what about cleary uh, agent cleary from uh, no way home and from uh, miss marvel you know he's been a little sus uh, questioning um, Peter Parker, and he seemed to know that Fury was off-world. Like, how did he know that? Well, I'm wondering if he might be a good scroll. I could see, again, Fury putting scrolls within sword and within damage control. So I'm betting he is a scroll, but probably a good scroll. But Deaver, man, Deaver, she, she was something else, man. She was about as malicious as Haywood. So I'm wondering if she's a bad scroll who was, again, trying to keep her position in damage control and, and gain uh, information, tech, etc. And wouldn't it be wild then if that picture there with both of them, a diva on the left, bad scroll, Clary on the right, good scroll. 
wild to think that, that you know, the, the, each organization has been infiltrated by both types of scrolls, good and bad. Wild. All right, how about Stark Industries? Pepper Potts. Could she be a scroll? Well, if so, uh, the question would be when, <laughs> because wouldn't that be wild if she was a scroll when they had Morgan, you know? if by that point she had been turned into a scroll. So yes, that would mean Tony was not conceiving Morgan with the real Pepper, but with a scroll pretending to be Pepper. I don't even want to go there, but still, that would be wild. That would be wild. So potentially she could be a scroll. I would actually, though, think it's more likely that uh, Happy would be the scroll. Uh, and again, not the whole time because he's been, he was badly injured in Iron Man 3. No way he was a scroll in Iron Man 3. But later down the road, he has acted kind of strange. I mean, look at how in No Way Home, he had all that Stark tech in his apartment. What on earth was that all about? Why, why, why would he have that? And why would he be trying to keep it? Very interesting, very very interesting, and and never really explained. So if he was uh, eventually taken over by a scroll, who was using his position to get Stark Tech, boy, that could explain a lot, right? And supposedly Ar Armor Wars is going to deal with stolen Stark Tech. Is it possible that Happy, you know, is a scroll, and that's the reason some of the Stark Tech got out in the wrong hands? Very interesting, right? Okay, how about Pym Tech? Could Hank be a scroll? Now, keep in mind, Quantum Mania in the timeline is all the way into mid to late 2026. I think it's July 2026. It's the last thing on the timeline. I'm pretty sure Secret Invasion is going to be in 2025, and we'll talk a little more at the end about where I think it's going to be exactly in the timeline. But keep in mind that Secret Invasion is before Quantum Mania. That's for sure. So Hank could be a scroll. Uh, up to that point, and then discovered during Secret Invasion, because that would put him in a very big position of power, access to PIM tech, the PIM particles, etc., and close affiliation with Scott. But I also think it'd be epic if our buddy Luis was a scroll. And so can you imagine how awesome it'll be when they go find those bodies that we saw earlier, and they, they unhook him from the machine, immediately his little theme song plays, and he goes into an overly detailed, unnecessarily, uh, you know, all over the place story about what happened to him. Oh my goodness, that would be epic. Love Luis. And in fact, since he wasn't in Quantum Mania, darn it, we need a Luis story. So please, please Marvel, if you haven't, reshoot it if it's not in Secret Invasion. Right now, get this in there. We must have him be a scroll. Epic. All right, government agencies. I mean, I mentioned earlier that, they, that, that the scrolls might want to get involved in several different government agencies. So you got Wu. And I love Wu. I love me some Jimmy Wu. But maybe at some point he was replaced by a scroll. I mean, Ross, Everett Ross has looked really suspicious uh, at times. So obviously during uh, the first Black Panther, he was very badly injured. That would not be a scroll at that point. But it could have been after that. So keep in mind, they don't have to have been a scroll the entire time we've known them. Another possibility, how about Secretary Ross, who is soon to be President Ross? He could be found out to be a scroll. I kind of doubt it because we really see a path for him right now. I think something's going to happen to Ritson, which we're about to get to him, President Ritson. And I think that that's what's going to let Ross move from uh, Secretary Ross all the way up to President Ross. Um, and then he's going to turn into the Red Hulk, so we could have a President Red Hulk. But So I really doubt he'll be a scroll. Still, though, that would be interesting. That would be very interesting. Uh, okay, then we got uh, some new characters, uh, Fallsworth. Um, she seems a little suspicious. Now, I think that might be in a, the way they're trying to make the trailers make her look suspicious, and that really she won't be, but you never know. I mean, sometimes the new characters are the ones to keep an eye on. And then we got poor Ritson. I've I've mentioned him a couple times now. I wish I had a picture where he doesn't look like that. Poor dude. Uh, he Something bad is going to happen to him there in that accident. I think he is ultimately going to die. I am wondering if he's the funeral that uh, supposedly is going to be attended in uh, Captain America Brave New World, which is the new title, in case you haven't heard. It's no longer New World Order. It's Brave New World. But they're all attending a funeral. And I'm wondering if it's his. But anyway, is he a scroll? That would be crazy to think that, this, that a scroll literally impersonated the president of the United States. Or is Nick Fury framed for whatever happens to him here 
and uh, they uh, he ends up being killed, sure, but it looks like it's by Nick Fury. Wild. So something's going on there. Uh, he's either a scroll or he's going to be found out to be someone in his administration, maybe. Set him up. So we'll see. Okay, how about Wakanda? I mean, it seems unlikely Shuri would be a scroll, especially since I believe this series is after Wakanda Forever when she assumed the role of the Black Panther. Um, but boy, would that be wild uh, if somehow she turned out to be. I really doubt it, though. But still, more likely might be uh, M'Baku. M'Baku uh, seems to be uh, running Wakanda now, right? Uh, they put him in charge. Uh, and so, boy, that'd be a huge deal if he turned out to be a scroll in disguise and involved at Wakanda. Um, and then uh, Nakia. It seems unlikely, you know, with now we know uh, about her uh, birthing uh, the, cha- the, the son of uh, T'Challa. Uh, seems very unlikely, but since she's off in Haiti, you know, uh, so a, a scroll could even just leave her be because she probably doesn't communicate much with Wakanda from there and a scroll could go and impersonate her and head into Wakanda and get access. So anyway, a couple possibilities. I do think it would be very interesting if someone in Wakanda turned out to be a scroll. Uh, how about New Asgard? You know, they, uh, I don't think a scroll could replicate uh, uh, Valkyrie's really uh, amazing level of strength, but still, if they could somehow capture her and replace her, they'd be in charge of New Asgard. Wow, that would be incredible. But then keep in mind, you don't have to be in charge of an organization. You can be <laughs> friends with someone that is. So how about Korg or Meek? Little Meek ending up being a scroll. That'd be wild. Uh, and remember, they can they can uh, impersonate things of smaller size. So they could actually be Meek. That'd be, that would be amazing. Uh, then, they, then we got some of the shady hired hands. Mitchell Carcel, Carson from the first Ant-Man movie, we've never really learned what he was up to. And what's going on with him? So maybe he was a scroll all along. Who knows? Uh, then we got Sonny Birch from the second Ant-Man movie. The Ant-Man movies love to give us shady hired hands and then not tell us where they where they went or what they're doing. So either one of these guys could turn out to be a scroll. Although I am hearing we may see more from Sonny Birch in the future. That he may make a reappearance. So he may not uh, end up being a scroll. But Mitchell Carson, man, that dude, scroll, man. Look at those eyes. That's a scroll. All right, shady organizations. Now, uh, with with all due respect to Zhai Ling, she may be actually trying to turn things around with the Ten Rings and, and make them reputable, but it, she just really looked like that wasn't her plan. She really looked like she was going to use it to maybe keep her father's legacy going. So either way, being in charge of the Ten Rings, whether she's turning it around or whether she's you know using it for bad, either way, if they, if they took her over, that would be a very powerful organization to have somebody in. How about Val? You know, I I think Val would make a lot of sense to be a scroll. I just hope she isn't. I really like her character. I like how she's building the Thunderbolts and all the things going on. So I kind of hope she's not. But boy, that would be a smart one to take over. And then, of course, Sharon Carter. We, you know, we all kind of feel like her turn uh, the, uh, of Breaking Bad, if you will, in Falcon and the Winter Soldier was a real shock and a real disappointment because I really like her character. So I kind of hope she is a scroll and that they explain why she's doing what she's doing. So we'll see. I mean, it's kind of an obvious pick, but at the same time, I'd be really happy if they went that direction. Uh, all right, how about non-powered superheroes? Because again, I just don't think we're going to see a lot of superheroes in the series. Um Although there are some trailers. One of the trailers I saw actually had Rhodey in his War Machine armor. So that will be interesting if that's the case. But nonetheless, these are non-powered superheroes that they could easily duplicate. And Rhodey, man, dude, you're right at the top of the list. Uh, in fact, him being a scroll could explain how the Stark tech uh, got into evil hands as well. I still think it's Happy did it. But remember, Armor Wars is going to deal with uh, Tony's missing tech. Now, Another reason Rhodey might be a scroll is it could explain this. Yeah, so come on. That would totally explain how he, he, switched, he switched bodies, right? Although in all seriousness, it's unlikely since obviously he, uh, he can't have been a scroll during Civil War. But still, that's pretty sus when you totally change your face like that. Uh, all right, how about Sam? Uh, I'm not even sure if Sam is even going to appear in the series, but he's another non-powered superhero that could easily be a scroll. How about Hawkeye? There's another non-powered superhero that could be a scroll, or 
or Laura, for that matter, Laura Barton, uh, a.k.a. Mockingbird. So a couple of possibilities there that would be very interesting to find out they were scrolls. Uh, then we got what I'm just going to call potpourri. These are a lot of secondary characters, but who would be, you know, smart picks for scrolls? I mean, Dr. Selvig, he's got access to a lot of special information, so he would be interesting. Uh, how about Melina? Uh, she, I don't believe she was superpowered. I don't remember her uh, having any any special powers, so she would be very interesting uh, to potentially be a scroll. And how about Zemo? How about Zemo? You know, you have to look at it and say, okay. The dance, right? The infamous dance. That has to be a scroll pretending to be human, but not having really any clue how to dance, right? In fact, I'm betting Zemo somewhere is saying, yeah, please, please let that be a scroll. I, I didn't do that dance. I didn't do that. Let, let that be a scroll, please. Anyway, he, he would be very interesting. How about uh, Kingo's valet? That dude was awesome, first of all. Awesome, loved him, but really, are any humans as nice as him? I mean, really, he's, he's so nice. There's no way he's human. He's a scroll pretending to be someone that's really, really nice. Gotta be, right? Gotta be a scroll. Plus, he would have access, therefore, to, to uh, the Eternals and Kingo. Uh, then how about Katie? You know, I mean, think about that. She, she could very well, once Shang-Chi went public, once we knew who he was, it would make sense for scrolls to want to get access to, to uh, his uh, um, 10 rings, his tech. Speaking of wanting access to people with tech, you know, Bruno, just saying, maybe, maybe. In fact, wouldn't it be wild if both Katie and Bruno ended up being scrolls and then somehow, and this won't happen, but I'm just for fun, somehow got a hold of both the 10 rings and the bangles. Or, or Bangal, singular. That would be crazy. That'd be crazy. But it does just, again, show these, these sidekicks, if you will, these friends of superheroes, they are fodder for, for scrolls to want to take over. Then how about Trevor? Good old Trevor. Could he be a scroll? Well, I'll tell you this. You'll never see me coming. Very well could be a scroll, right? We wouldn't see it coming. Trevor, you rock, man. Kind of hope you're not a scroll. One of my favorite characters, but yeah, you rock. And then finally, <laughs> I'm just saying, how about Madison? How about Madison? Because come on, no human spells their name, Madison, the way she does, with two N's and one Y, but not where you think. <laughs> but really, wouldn't it be wild? Because if she was a scroll, she would have very close access to Wong, or Wongers, as the case may be. Let me stress, very close access. We'll just leave it at that. So yeah, she would be wild if she turned out to be a scroll. Who knows, right? Who knows? Well, there you go. Those are my picks for who might be a scroll. Tell me what you think. Who is the most likely from this list to be a scroll, and maybe who is the absolute least likely to be a scroll? Okay, so I did mention I was going to discuss where I think Secret Invasion will land in the timeline. So this is, of course, the Disney Plus timeline. And I think Secret Invasion is probably going to be late fall, early winter, based on the clothing they're wearing uh, in, in the episodes that we've seen, or sorry, in the trailers that we've seen. So I'm going to place it in between Werewolf by Night and Guardians Holiday Special. I could also see it being between Thor, Love and Thunder, and Werewolf by Night. But either way, we're going to know for sure uh, in less than two weeks, because of course it'll show up immediately in the timeline on Disney Plus. It's one of the nice things, at least about the shows, is they show up immediately. You know uh, where uh, they're being placed. So that's my guess. Let me know what you think. If you think it's going to be somewhere else in the timeline, and then also, as I always mention, we do have a Discord server, and here we are indeed talking about uh, Secret Invasion. So I will leave a pinned comment with a link to the Discord server, and you can join. Also, if you don't mind, like this video, subscribe if you haven't already. You can check out more content, and we can all continue to enjoy the ever-growing, ever-expanding Marvel Cinematic Universe.